Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be unboxing an entire collection of HO scale model trains I picked up on eBay. Basically, a couple months ago, I came across this listing, and it was sort of a funny story because from the outside, it looked to be a listing for just two Tenshoto locomotives. But after a closer look, I realized the seller was actually selling off their entire collection. So since the listing wasn't very clear, not very many people showed up, and I was able to buy everything in this box for $70, which I think is a pretty rocking deal. There looked to be a lot of different things, including track, locomotives, um, cars, all sorts of different stuff. I hope that uh, everything's okay, however. It did get pretty damaged during shipping, but uh, yeah, we'll have a look and uh, hopefully there's some decent stuff in here. My goodness. So right off the bat, we've got a uh, bridge. And then we got a whole bunch of uh, track. This is old, old grass track. Not uh, terribly valuable, but uh, still quite a bit of it. And then down here looks to be a lot of the stuff which I was really curious about. There's a ton of pieces of rolling stock and uh, there's certainly some locomotives. So let's have a look at everything. Green Bay and Western. Baltimore and Ohio. That's by uh, Gilbert. Insulated cookie box from the Rio Grande. Also another uh, American-made Gilbert product. Got a Pennsylvania Railroad uh, boxcar from Varney. I think this is a uh, Milwaukee Road piece, probably by uh, Mantua Tyco. Another Pennsylvania Railroad boxcar. Another one. Got some sort of a uh, hopper, and I think this is by Ravel. Ravel 1956. Another Mantua Tyco piece of some sort. I think it might be a uh, maintenance of the way piece, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, that's cool. We got uh, some sort of a uh, trailer from the uh, Monon Railroad, and uh, this is actually all die cast. This is a very uh, heavy piece of equipment. Very cool. I think this is a die cast truck and trailer. It's kind of come apart. Hopefully the other pieces are somewhere in there for that. Got some uh, die cast construction equipment. Here's a whole bag of uh, different vehicles. I was uh, really happy to see this in the listing because HO scale vehicles are actually quite expensive. Even ones like this, which are not that valuable, I find will usually go for about $3 a piece. So these will be a very welcome addition to the collection. Some sort of flat car. And then we've got another bag of HO scale vehicles. Got a whole bunch of uh, really cool looking cars in there. Baltimore and Ohio. It's had to have been built out of some sort of kit. What the heck is this? It almost looks like it's a uh, half box car, half caboose. Never seen that before, and I think this is another uh, man to a Tyco piece. This is so strange. Check this out. I love the old packaging. Let's see what's inside here. Looks like a kit for uh, prop possibly a hopper. That might be a fun project. Appears to be a very uh, simple kind of caboose. Uh, however, it's all uh, die cast. Isn't that cool? I'm guessing that this collection had to have been created probably in the late 50s or early 60s, just judging by the era of a lot of the stuff in here. Got a Golf uh, oil tank car. Even more vehicles, look at all this.
some sort of a uh, ridding uh, caboose. And uh, I think it must have a light or something inside there. I don't know, we'll have to test that out later. Some sort of a uh, cattle car from Varney. Huh, an almost identical caboose. I think we've got some sort of a crane inside this one. Yeah, look at that. Even looks to be in uh, somewhat decent shape. Oh, look at that. An old uh, New Haven boxcar. And yeah, this is another uh, Gilbert product. Another uh, oil tank car. Yeah, I got an old uh, Bachman controller. Not a uh, terribly powerful uh, thing, but uh, it is good for powering lights and things like that. And then down here is the bit which I am most excited about, and that is all of these different HO scale locomotives. So let's have a look, see what we got here. Well, right off the bat, we appear to have an old uh, blue box. No, it's not a blue box. Olympic Express, made in Japan. Looks exactly like an Athern. I don't know, we'll have to uh, test that out later, but uh, other than it missing some handrails, it actually looks to be in uh, pretty good shape. Now this was one of the things which I was most excited about, and this is a brass Tenshodo B unit, and there's a matching F unit for this. Let's look at the condition of that. It's missing, you know, a little bit of paint here and there, but uh, overall it's very well done. I think this is a Varney. Overall uh, looks to be in good shape. Not the uh, fanciest paint work out there, but uh, this, this one I have a feeling is gonna run. We're gonna test all this stuff later on, so it uh, should be exciting to see. Here's the uh, matching brass Tenshoto F unit. Um, unfortunately, this thing appears to have lost a lot of its paint in the shipping. That was not there when I bought it. It's, yeah, it's not in great shape. It's gonna need some repairs, but uh, these are very well-built locomotives, so I'm sure we can get this one running if it doesn't go. Here we've got, uh, I think it's an old River Rossi 040 locomotive. It looks to be in pretty good shape, although I think this is probably one of their earlier models considering the uh, lack of detail. These uh, usually come back to life pretty easily. Here's uh, an old Varney locomotive. Uh, this one unfortunately is missing its bands, but uh, yeah, overall a pretty good locomotive. This is one of the uh, die cast models. It looks like somebody uh, installed this backwards though. And we got another uh, diecast 040. I think this is by Varney. And then finally, we've got this uh, fairly large steam locomotive. If I'm not mistaken, this is by Gilbert. Well, it's not seized, but I don't have a clue if that's gonna start or not. Look at all these different wires. Okay, it's kind of coming apart here. And well, the valve gear and so on is not in such great shape. But yeah, overall, for $70, everything you see here, I, I feel very good about this deal. Now, why don't we sort all these locomotives out and different pieces of equipment, and uh, then we'll test everything. Well, it's now a few hours later, and I went through and tried to organize everything to the best of my abilities. A lot of this stuff was actually in far better condition than I was expecting. I'm going to go through and try to explain what my plans are roughly with each group of items, starting with the rolling stock here. And uh, a lot of this stuff was actually in far better shape than I was expecting. You know, I did have to replace a couple couplers, but for the most part, I just threw all these cars on my layout and they seem to be rolling fine. So that's a really good start. Honestly, I thought all this stuff was going to be in really rough condition, but uh, these things are so simple. They're kind of hard to break. And we actually have an entire maintenance of the way train from Tycho Mantua, so I think that's all pretty cool. If any of the uh, locomotives in this collection work, we'll definitely uh, pull one of these uh, two trains here. So that's kind of the story with the rolling stock. I don't know if I'm going to keep every single one of these items, but there's a few in here which I like, and I'll probably upgrade them to metal wheels just so that they don't uh, pollute the track. 
So yeah, that's the story for the rolling stock. Now moving on to the miscellaneous stuff. Now we've got a few cars here. All the pieces of rolling stock you see here were either uh, missing their coupler boxes or something like that, so I wasn't able to fix them just yet. With a little bit of work, we can probably get them rolling again, but uh, I just don't have the parts on hand, so those are gonna need some love. Now, uh, in the box of track, I actually found an entire riser set, so these might come in handy for some certain projects. I don't have anything specifically in mind, but there are a few things they might go towards, so that's quite handy. And then we've got all the uh, construction vehicles. I don't know if I'm gonna keep these. I don't think they're actually HO scale and I think they might look a little out of place on the layout, but uh, we'll see. And uh, then we got things like this, these uh, fire trucks. I don't really think I'm gonna end up using these. They're just kind of unusual uh, from a much different era and the uh, detail's not exactly great. So I don't really know if I want those. However, we do have things like this kit, which I'm definitely gonna build at some point. I've never built a rolling stock kit before, and uh, it looks like we have every single part here, so that is absolutely fantastic. So that should make for a, a pretty cool project somewhere up the road. The crane, unfortunately, is not in such great shape. Um, I know I said earlier that the ropes had good tension, but unfortunately, uh, I tried to kind of wind this up and it actually uh, did something to it. So I don't really know what the story is there, but I'll have to fix that. It's also missing uh, a coupler there. So that's something that needs some work. Now as for uh, all the track here, I uh, went through and uh, there's really nothing special. It's really all just a bunch of old brass track. And uh, to tell you all the truth, I don't really need it just because I already have a lot of spare track on hand. And uh, brass track is really not ideal. I mean, if you're trying to build a budget layout, this will get the job done. You just need to clean it quite often. And you know, it's not gonna work as well. So I might end up just giving this away to a hobby shop or something. I don't really know. But uh, yeah, there's probably enough track in here to build an entire layout. So maybe for somebody this might be useful. So that's the story for uh, the miscellaneous stuff. Now moving on to the vehicles. So the vehicles all fit in very well on the layout in my opinion. I've been just kind of looking for stuff to fill up the parking lot of my Hershey's factory here. And even if they're not the highest detail out there, frankly from a distance it's kind of hard to tell the difference between a uh, very undetailed vehicle and one that's quite nice like uh, this uh, Pontiac here. So yeah, I'm quite happy with how this is all looking. Some of the other vehicles too I was able to find homes for, like this truck, which as you saw earlier was in a bunch of different pieces. I just added some glue to that, and you know what? It doesn't look half bad. It's a very cool uh, night, maybe late 50s, early 60s truck. I, I assume for hauling cattle, I'm not 100% sure, but either way, quite happy with uh, where that's at. And uh, just added on other things like the uh, auto loader, as well as uh, all the other kind of miscellaneous cars in different spots. It just makes everything look a little more alive, which is exactly what I was aiming for. So I'm absolutely thrilled with all that. Now, let's test out some of these locomotives and find out if any of them actually run or not. So I think to start off, we'll begin with the River Rossi 040. These are very simplistic locomotives, and uh, I think that this one's probably got a decent chance of starting. We'll get it set up on the track here and uh, give it a little bit of power. And, uh, well, <laughs> that's quite promising. Uh, let's give it some more voltage here. Oh yeah. Well, that thing's got plenty of life. Wow. Well, that thing just certainly didn't take much prodding to get going again. Let's uh, try this one out. And I think, again, this is an old Varney locomotive. The wheels actually don't look half bad on it. So uh, I think this one's gonna start. Let's find out. All right, I'm putting some power in the track. I do see a little bit of current draw. It's pulling about an amp. I can actually hear the motor humming, but, oh. Nothing. We had it for a second there. So this one technically is running. I mean, it's moving under its own power, but I mean, like it's drawing about an amp and a half if I uh, move it on the track here, which is way too much power. And if we keep trying to force it to go, we're just gonna end up burning out the motor, but that's quite promising. It probably just needs some fresh oil, honestly. So that is absolutely fantastic. We've already got two runners right out of the gate. Now uh, we've got uh, this locomotive right here. 
That uh, wheel's not looking so good, but uh, hopefully it will start. I've, I've got a good feeling about this one, actually. Again, these 040s are just so darn simple that it takes a lot to break them. I heard something. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's starting. Come on. Oh, it sounds terrible. Those uh, bearings on the motor probably need some oil. But uh, it's definitely running. And popping a wheelie. That's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, those are all. So far, we got three runners. Now, time for the 10 Shoto. Now, I noticed that this one is actually in far worse shape than I was expecting. I don't know if this got damaged during the shipping, but uh, we'll put it on the track here and see if it will do anything. I suspect we're gonna have a short circuit, but let's give it a chance. Oh. Yeah, we got sparks. Oh, it's trying to go. All right, well, we know the motor works. This clearly needs uh, a lot of effort put into it. Something's quite off with it. I don't know why it's bouncing on the track like that, and the commutator just looks terrible, but... Uh, Overall, I think that this one does have the potential to ride the rails once again, so certainly not a complete loss. Now, next off, we've got the Varney locomotive. Now, somebody installed this drive backwards, and we know it's missing its band, so this thing's certainly not going to uh, run per se, but uh, we'll at least be able to test if the motor works or not. And honestly, with the track record of these Varneys, I think it probably will. No doubt, and we've even got a working headlight, too. If we can find a band, this shouldn't be too hard to get going again. I don't know how hard it is to find those types of parts, but uh, either way, it's kind of a cool locomotive. Sort of reminds me of the uh, F-Unit from uh, Runaway Train, the 1985 movie. Now we got this one, which again, supposedly is a Japanese model, but uh, reminds me a lot of an Athern, so I, I really don't know what to think of this one. Well, let's give it some power and find out. We've got current draw. I hear the motor humming. Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to give that any more power. I think that uh, the drive on this one is completely seized. So I don't really know what the deal with that is, but uh, that's going to need some work for sure. And now finally we've got uh, this. I kind of have my doubts about it. It's, I don't know. It doesn't look to be in such great shape, plus we're missing a wire there, so... I don't know. We'll, we'll put it on the track and just test it out for kicks. Well, there are no short circuits so far. And now we got a short circuit. Tender's got smoke coming from it. That's weird. Yeah, I don't uh, think that this steamer right here is exactly going to run. So, you know, we've uh, got a few which are definitely going to need some work. I mean, really all of them are going to need work. But overall, I'm uh, quite happy with them. I mean, we do have uh, at least three pretty solid engines. So that's uh, great. Now, as for the two cabooses, let's see if these things do, in fact, have a light or not. Saw it for a second there. Okay, this one's got a short. Yeah, check it out. It does have a working light. That's pretty cool. Now, since this is the only engine which uh, runs somewhat consistently, I think it's going to be the engine of choice to haul the train, as I said I would. I got this uh, conversion car for the coupler here. Let's see if this thing can pull some of those cars.
And just before we finish things off here, we'll just uh, run the maintenance of the way train to see how that looks going around the layout. You know, I've got to say I'm quite impressed with this locomotive, you know, it might not have run in several decades and here it is pulling a train around the layout. Looks like we've uh, lost a car here. Well folks, I think I'm going to call it a wrap for today. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm overall very happy with all the recent additions to the collection. I think that there's a lot of really unique stuff in this lot which uh, I don't usually unbox here on the channel. And you know, I'm going to have to go through it all and decide what it is I want to keep and what I want to get rid of. But there are some things in here I'm pretty confident uh, have found themselves a home here on the layout. And uh, there's some really unique projects in here too, which I'm looking forward to working on at some point in the future. But until then, I just want to thank you all so much for watching.